almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated to receive the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. <laughs> Blow the triumph and the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm signal on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the lands shake with fear. For the day of the Lord is about to come. Indeed, it is near. It will be a day of dreadful darkness, a day of foreboding storm clouds, like blackness spread over the mountains. It is a huge and powerful army. There has never been anything like it before, and there will not be anything like it for many generations to come. The earth quakes before them. The sky reverberates. The sun and the moon grow dark. The stars refuse to shine. The voice of the Lord thunders as he leads his army. Indeed, his warriors are innumerable. Surely his command is carried out. Yes, the day of the Lord is awesome and very terrifying. Who can survive it? Yet even now, the Lord says, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear your hearts, not just your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful, compassionate, slow to anger, and boundless in loyal love, often relenting from calamitous punishment. Who knows? Perhaps he will be compassionate and grant a reprieve and leave a blessing in his wake, a meal offering and a drink offering for you to offer to your Lord, our, your God. Blow the triumph, trumpet in Zion. Announce a holy fast. Proclaim a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify an assembly. Gather the elders. Gather the children and the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom come out from his bedroom and the bride from her private quarters. Let the priests, those who serve the Lord, weep from the vestibule all the way back to the altar. Let them say, have pity, O Lord, on your people. Please do not turn over your inheritance to be mocked, to become a proverb among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> we will pray the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all of our rest. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is slow to compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us in the of our sins, nor will he us in the of our For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his covenant, 
remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, our great angels of his, you mighty ones who live his name, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all the works of his, and all the ways of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all my soul. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his plea through us. We plead with you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we would, not, would become the righteousness of God. <laughs> Now, because we are fellow workers, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, I heard you at the acceptable time, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We do not give anyone an occasion for taking an offense in anything, so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But... As God's servants, we have commended ourselves in every way, with great endurance, with persecutions, with difficulties, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in troubles, in sleepless nights, in hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by benevolence, by the Holy Spirit, by genuine love, by truthful teaching, by the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for both the right hand and for the left, through glory and dishonor, through slander and praise, regarded as impostors and yet true, as unknown as yet well known, as dying, and yet, see, we continue to live as those who are scourged and not yet executed, as sorrowful but always rejoicing, as poor but making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And the, Spirit. Spirit. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said, be careful, not to dis be careful not to display your righteousness merely to be seen by people. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Thus, whenever you do charitable giving, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in synagogues and on streets, so that people will praise them. I tell you the truth, they have their reward. But when you do your giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your gift may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look sullen like the hypocrites, <clears throat> For they make their faces unattractive, so that people will see them fasting. I tell you the truth, they have their reward. When you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others when you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not accumulate for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But accumulate for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise be to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we have a little bit of an anomaly. Ash Wednesday is customarily taken by us to be the beginning of Lent. In fact, what we do today is a day of penitence. Um, it is one of the two strict, most strict days of penitence in the, in the church calendar. Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are both days when we, we encourage the practice of fasting for those who are able to do it. Uh, at least fasting from food, if not from, from other things. Um, but in fact, Lent doesn't begin until Sunday, so you still have a couple of days. Um, but this is a time of the year when we prepare to enter Lent. This is the time of year when we get our things in order, so that when Lent begins on Sunday, we begin it well. And we are able to, to take full advantage of the blessings of our Lenten practices. Traditionally, the Lenten practices are prayer and fasting and almsgiving, or self-denial and almsgiving. Um, but again, as, as Jesus says, these are not things that we do in order to earn credit, right? We don't get these things so that, that someone will give us credit for having done the right stuff. Uh, we don't, we're not doing this to pass a test we're not doing this to get our ticket punched, to, tick, to check off boxes on a, on a to-do list. The idea is not to do certain things, but to experience the change of heart that doing those things brings about. The behaviors are not the point. They're the means to the point. They're how we get to that renewal of heart and renewal of spirit. Prayers are the means. Fasting is the means. Almsgiving is the means to the end of becoming a changed person, of becoming more, more the person that we were always intended to be, members of God's household, the restoration of the human race to its proper place with regard to God. So the things that we do during Lent, they're, they're not technologies, they're not ways, they're not sort of, you know, life hacks that result in us being happier or being better people in the end. They're challenges. They're challenges to us to use our bodies and our resources and our time differently so that we do become changed and different people. And we may actually fail. We may not succeed in the Lenten disciplines we undertake. How many people have you know, managed to, to stay faithful to their New Year's resolutions, right? We think of Lent as, well, what are you gonna give up for Lent, right? And you think, well, if I can make it for 40 days without whatever it is I'm not going to indulge in, then after 40 days are over, I can go back to indulging in it with renewed vigor and, and greater enjoyment. But that's not the point. The point is to become changed. It's not like, we're not trying to flip a switch. We're trying to be completely remade. It's a process of growth. It's a process of learning. And even if we fail, we still learn. And we come back and we repent and we begin again, over and over and over again. So the things that we do for Lent are not things that we can make efficient. We can't say to ourselves, okay, I'm gonna pray more during Lent and I'm gonna give myself X amount of time and I have to kind of stick with that. And that's a good discipline, certainly, to do that. But the point is not to be able to say at the end of Lent, yeah, I did it, I did it, I prayed my 20 minutes extra a day, or I read the scriptures more, or I gave extra money to, to some good cause, to some charity, or, um, or I, I went without whatever, you know, name your vice. Um, but it's not, the point is not to make it efficient, the point is, to discover the, the ways in which we're tempted to slip back into our old ways of living and not go there. So there's no, there's no shoehorning this into an already busy life. The whole point is to carve out room in that life and throw away the stuff that used to occupy that space. 
whether that space is a space of time spent getting to know God and getting to be known by God, or whether that's time and space spent being better towards others, loving others better, taking time for them, making room for them in our lives, or whether it's what we do with our, our calendars and our checkbooks. It means getting rid of stuff, not temporarily, so that it can come back again with renewed vigor. And where Jesus talks about the, the demons that were cast out, right? When a, a demon is cast out, a person's all clean, and the demon goes out and brings seven worse than itself and brings them back in to a nicely swept, clean house. The whole point is not to go back. The point is to, to come out of this closer to being the kind of people God has created us and called us and invited us to be. It's an opportunity during Lent to experience the temptations that we will feel, the discomfort we will feel having given something up, or the discomfort we feel when we, when we try to do more by way of love and service to others, or the discomfort we feel when we spend more time in prayer or the reading of scripture. And to recognize those as temptations and our need for the grace of God in order to become people who are not as uncomfortable as we used to be with those things. It's a challenge for us to reconsider our priorities on a permanent basis. Priorities for our spending, priorities for our time, priorities for our emotional commitments and our emotional reactions. It means not going back to business as usual, not going back to knee-jerk, habitual responses, but learning new habits, unlearning old ones and learning new ones. And that doesn't mean necessarily that you have to, um, that you have to do a complete 180 in the course of 40 days, but there's a start. It's a start. You may not have to spend all of your time in church, but you may want to spend more of your time in church than you used to. You may want to spend more of your resources on something that you would not ordinarily want to. You may want to spend more of your time on something that you would not ordinarily or naturally want to, but because it's something that, that reflects the Spirit of God in you. But it's only by doing it. It's only by the practice. It's only by taking that time, by short-circuiting the habits, by short-circuiting the, the natural responses. It's only by making the commitments to do what we ordinarily don't want to do that we learn better how to love. And we get a better experience better understanding, a better appreciation of the commitment God made to us and stuck with us when we were ungrateful or didn't even pay attention. It's only by developing those disciplines and practice that, that God can teach us what is real and true. Only by dropping our insistence on keeping things the way they've always been, will we grow into a new happiness and a better one. Only those who develop a taste and a desire and a delight in pleasing God will find God pleasing. Those who learn to love what God loves will find heaven heavenly. Those who learn to love what God loves are already there. It's a backwards process. It's a process of reversal. You know, in the world, we, we start everything with, with great fanfare and great energy and lots of excitement. And, and, and it's like lighting a fire. It's like when I burnt the palms out in front this morning. Right? They go up in a blaze. Palms burn really fast and hot. But they're over in a minute, and we're left with ashes. And that's the way of the world. We start off with lots of enthusiasm. And then we peter out and we're left with cold, 
gritty ashes. But God does the opposite. God takes those cold, gritty ashes. In 90 days from now, 40 years of Lent, 50 days of Easter until Pentecost, God takes those ashes, the ashes of our lives, the ashes of the messes we've made, the things that, that have been destroyed and we don't think can ever be, ever be recovered and, and restored. God turns those back into fire at Pentecost. That's what we're doing. We're starting from ashes and waiting for the fire. Let's make good use of the ashes and make a good Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel as you are able, bow, adopt some posture of penitence and humility before the Lord, our Maker and our Redeemer. Almighty God, thou hast created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be unto us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by thy gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to come forward if you wish to receive ashes. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and to dust thou will return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust shalt thou return. Remember that thou art dust, 
and to dust shalt thou return. Please be seated. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great, your great compassion, a lot of my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And do not was able to be merciful. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body of my broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked. And sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God. And my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O oh God, my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion. And rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. So they shall offer young bullocks on your altar. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to thee and, and to one another, another and to the whole community of saints, saints in, our in heaven and on earth, and earth that we have sinned, sinned by our own fault, in thought, word, word and, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, of course, you have us. We have been deaf to thy call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. We confess to thee, O Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to thee, O Lord, our lust, gluttony, and abuse of others. We confess to thee, O Lord, our anger, hatred, malice, and envy. We confess to thee, O Lord, our laziness, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, 
and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We, we confess to thee, O Lord. Accept our repentance, O Lord. For the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and for our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, O Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, O Lord. For our poor stewardship and misuse of thy creation, and our lack of concern for generations to come. Accept our repentance, O Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let thy anger depart from us. Amen. hear us, for thy mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of thy salvation. And we By the cross and passion of thy Son, our Lord. And hear us with all thy saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of sinners, but rather that they, may, that they may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts do believe his holy gospel. Therefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. We also have a place here. Peace. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of laziness meddling, self-importance, gossip, and lust for power. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But grant to me, your servant, a spirit of chastity, integrity, humility, patience, and love. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh, my Lord and King, Grant me to see my own faults and not to condemn others. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are blessed now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Ghost.